TV shows and movies typically show you only two ideas of prison. The first kind of prison they show you is this brutal, drug-infested rape world from which there is no escape. The second prison is this kind of Shawshank, Green Mile redemption boarding school where the biggest danger is the guards. I have been lucky enough that my parents kept me out of trouble as a kid and as a teenager, and I made the right combo of choices to stay out of jail and live a decent life. And believe me, I'm thankful for that. But today, we're going to search for some prison weird on today's episode of Five Weird Things. Welcome to the channel. You know, I think the closest I ever got to jail was when I didn't show up for court for about 10 speeding tickets that all became failure to appear warrants. Nasty business. Had to get those cleared up so I could join the army. Now, what was your closest brush with the law that was close but no cigar for being put away for a while? Let me know in the comments. All right, let's get into it. First, the things we should all know. There are over 2.3 million Americans currently in prison. That's a lot of people for a country of 332 million. The U.S. houses almost a quarter of the world's prison population. Over 1 million arrests per year are for drug possession. Only 23% of released prisoners stay out of prison. I realize it's basic math, but it has to be pointed out that that means 77% end up back in prison. That is about the saddest statistic I've ever heard. Good thing number five, famous prison breaks. El Chapo's Tunnel Escape. One of the most elaborate prison breaks in recent history occurred in July 2015 when Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, the notorious Mexican drug lord, escaped from the Altiplano Maximum Security Prison in Mexico. Guzman's associates constructed a sophisticated tunnel that stretched for over a mile from a nearby construction site to directly beneath his prison cell. The tunnel was equipped with lighting, ventilation, and a motorcycle on rails for transportation. Guzman crawled through the tunnel to freedom and remained at large for several months before being recaptured. The Great Escape from Alcatraz In June 1962, three inmates, Frank Morris, Clarence Anglin, and John Anglin, orchestrated one of the most famous prison breaks in history from Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary, located on an island in San Francisco Bay. The men meticulously crafted dummy heads from soap, toilet paper, and human hair to place in their beds to fool the guards during nighttime bed checks. Using makeshift tools, they chiseled through the walls of their cells, climbed to the roof, made a makeshift raft out of raincoats to cross the treacherous waters surrounding the island. Despite an extensive search, their bodies were never found, leading to speculation that they may have successfully reached the mainland and escaped. The 1983 Eli State Prison Breakout In December 1983, two inmates, Frederick Hunter and James Brandenburg, staged a daring escape from Eli State Prison, a maximum security facility in Nevada. The men used a makeshift ladder to scale the prison walls, then commandeered a prison transport van at gunpoint, where they get the gun. After a high-speed chase and shootout with authorities, Hunter and Brandenburg managed to evade capture for several days before being apprehended. The incident prompted significant security improvements at the prison, including the installation of additional perimeter fencing and enhanced surveillance measures. Weird thing number four, TV shows and movies about prison. TV shows, Orange is the New Black. Never watched it, but this acclaimed Netflix series follows the lives of inmates at a woman's minimum security federal prison. It explores themes of friendship, identity, and survival amidst the challenges of incarceration. Prison Break. This popular TV series follows Michael Schofield, a structural engineer who gets himself imprisoned in a maximum security prison to break out his wrongfully convicted brother, Lincoln Burroughs. The show combines elements of drama, suspense, and action. I've watched this one. It's amazing. Oz. A groundbreaking HBO series, Oz offers a gritty and realistic portrayal of life inside Oswald State Correctional Facility, a maximum security prison. It explores the power dynamics, violence, and corruption inherent in the prison system. Also saw that, also amazing. Movies. Now, I was only going to do three movies about prison, but I've seen all these movies, and I cannot justify leaving any of them out. First up, The Shawshank Redemption. Amazing film. Based on Stephen King's novella, this classic film follows the friendship between Andy a banker wrongly convicted of murder, and Red, a fellow inmate, as they navigate life inside Shawshank State Penitentiary. It's celebrated for its themes of hope, redemption, and resilience. Cool Hand Luke, starring Paul Newman. 
This iconic film tells the story of Luke Jackson, a rebellious prisoner who refuses to conform to the rules and regulations of a Florida chain gang. It explores themes of nonconformity, authority, and the struggle for individual freedom. Escape from Alcatraz, based on the real-life Escape from Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary. This film stars Clint Eastwood as Frank Morris, one of the inmates who orchestrates the daring breakout. It's a tense and gripping portrayal of the infamous prison escape. The Green Mile, adapted from Stephen King's novel. This film follows the lives of death row guards and inmates at Cold Mountain Penitentiary in the 30s. It explores themes of empathy, injustice, and the supernatural. And finally, Papillon. Based on the memoirs of Henri Charret, this film follows the harrowing journey of a French convict played by Steve McQueen as he attempts multiple escapes from the notorious Devil's Island penal colony in French Guyana. Thing number three, ancient prisons versus modern prisons. Ancient prison architecture and modern prison architecture serve similar functions, namely to confine and control individuals who have been convicted of crimes. However, there are notable differences in their design, purpose, and approach to incarceration. Ancient prison structure, such as those in ancient Rome or medieval Europe, often serve primarily as places of detention rather than facilities focused on rehabilitation. Punishment and deterrence were central to the philosophy of justice during those times. Ancient prisons were often austere and fortress-like in design, emphasizing security and confinement. They typically featured thick walls, small windows, limited access points to prevent escape. Conditions in ancient prisons were often harsh with overcrowding, unsanitary conditions, and limited access to basic necessities such as food and water. Torture and corporal punishment were also common forms of discipline. Ancient prisons played a role in maintaining social order and reinforcing the power of ruling authorities. They were often used to punish political dissidents, religious heretics, and individuals deemed threats to the established order. Modern prison architecture aimed to balance punishment with rehabilitation and reintegration into society. There is a greater emphasis on providing educational, vocational, and therapeutic programs to address the root causes of criminal behavior. Modern prisons are designed with principles of humane treatment and safety in mind. While security remains a priority, there's also a focus on creating environments that promote well-being and support the rehabilitation process. Modern facilities may include natural light, outdoor recreation areas, and spaces for educational and vocational activities. While conditions in modern prisons can vary widely depending on factors such as funding, management, and overcrowding, there are generally standards in place to ensure basic rights and amenities for inmates. However, concerns about violence, gang activity, and the overuse of solitary confinement persists in many facilities. Modern prisons are viewed as part of a broader criminal justice system that seeks to address crime through prevention, punishment, and rehabilitation. There's a growing recognition of the importance of alternatives to incarceration, such as diversion programs and community-based rehabilitation initiatives in addressing the underlying causes of criminal behavior. Weird thing number two, what would prison be without gangs? Prison gangs often operate under a very strict command structure with leaders at the top who give orders and maintain control over members. These leaders are typically referred to as shot callers or generals and wield significant influence within the prison system. Below them are lieutenants, soldiers, and associates who carry out their directives. This layered organization helps prison gangs maintain discipline, enforce rules, and coordinate criminal activities both inside and outside of prison. Many prison gangs are organized along ethnic or racial lines, with members typically sharing common cultural backgrounds or identities. Examples include the Aryan Brotherhood, which is primarily composed of white supremacists, and the Mexican Mafia, which is made up of individuals of Mexican descent. These affiliations provide a sense of belonging and protection within the prison environment, but can also contribute to intergang conflicts and violence. Prison gangs are involved in a wide range of criminal activities, both inside and outside of prison. These activities may include drug trafficking, extortion, smuggling, money laundering, and contract killings. Prison gangs often use their networks and influence to control illicit economies within correctional facilities, such as the distribution of drugs and contraband, as well as to maintain power and dominance over other inmates. And finally, weird thing number one, famous convicts. Al Capone, also known as Scarface, 
was an American gangster who rose to prominence during the Prohibition era. He became notorious for his involvement in organized crime, including bootlegging, gambling, and racketeering. Capone was eventually convicted of tax evasion in 1931 and sentenced to 11 years in federal prison. His imprisonment marked the downfall of his criminal empire, and he served most of his sentence at Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary. Nelson Mandela was a South African anti-apartheid revolutionary and politician who became a symbol of resistance against racial oppression. He was arrested in 1962 for his role in anti-apartheid activities and sentenced to life imprisonment. Mandela spent 27 years behind bars, primarily at Robben Island Prison, before being released in 1990. He later went on to become the first black president of South Africa and a global advocate for peace and reconciliation. Pablo Escobar was a Colombian drug lord and leader of the Medellin Cartel, one of the most powerful drug trafficking organizations in, in history. He became one of the wealthiest individuals in the world through his illicit drug trade, particularly cocaine. Escobar was hunted by law enforcement for years before he was finally killed by Colombian authorities in 1993. However, he spent time in prison before his death, including a brief stint at La Catedral, a luxurious prison he built for himself. Oscar Wilde was an Irish playwright, poet, and author known for his wit, flamboyance, and contributions to English literature. In 1895, Wilde was convicted of gross indecency for his homosexual relationships, which were illegal at the time in the United Kingdom. He was sentenced to two years of hard labor in prison. Wilde's imprisonment had a profound impact on his life and work, and he wrote the famous poem, The Ballad of Reading Gaul, based on his experiences in prison. Well, that's it for today's episode. Hope you heard something new and weird. Let me know what stood out down in the comments. Please like, subscribe, share the video, and this channel. As for those who watch till the end, today's code word is solitary. Put that down in the comments, and I'm going to put in the good word with the warden for you. Take care. You have a great day.